What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Olivia. I post videos about lifestyle, business, and social media. Today, I'm really excited to be sharing this video with you guys. This is going to be all about how I make a full-time income with less than 50,000 followers on Instagram. I'm not going to make this an hour long. I'm going to keep it as concise as I can. This isn't going to be a how to become an influencer, but I do have a podcast episode going super, super in depth with how I started along with my business partner in the influencer world. And that is an hour long conversation about how to start from square one. So if you're looking for that type of advice, I will link it in the description below. But today's video is going to be more so focused on if you already have an audience and how to leverage that audience to make income from it. I believe this video is going to resonate more so with that type of person, but it could also help you if you have 2,000 followers, 5,000 followers. I think this information, if you don't know where to start with monetizing your Instagram, this information will definitely help you regardless. So let's get right into it. This video is about what I do and what works for me. I am not claiming to be an Instagram influencer coach. I don't have a course that I can sell you. I don't have an ebook or a PDF worksheet. This is literally just my best advice that I would give to a friend who is picking my brains. The only resources I have for you are my podcast which is about female entrepreneurship and women in business. And we do talk a lot, a lot about influencing and we have a lot of influencers on. So that is a great resource. So the number one way that I make money from Instagram is with sponsorships, with brand partnerships. And basically that is when someone is paying you to take a photo or story, create content with their product, whether it's skincare, clothing, etc. You are using your likeness with the product to endorse it. The same way celebrities would um, endorse, endorse? That word sounds so weird now. <laughs> They're using their image with the product to make it more wantable. That's definitely not a word either. Okay, my brain needs a break. So there's a few different ways that I get my sponsorships, one of which is including the email in my profile. That is an easy access for brands who stumble upon my Instagram, who like my content, like my vibe, want to work with me. They can just click that email and reach out to me. And th that happens all the time. And from there, we will start negotiating. Another huge, huge way that I work with brands is that I reach out directly to them. So in my free time, I will actively look for brands that are A, already working with influencers because I know their budget is being allocated into the influencer market. Two, brands that I genuinely am just interested in, wanna try, would purchase myself, but I try to get for free because they might send it for free instead of me spending my money on it. So I just am always, every time I'm on Instagram, I'm kind of also looking for brands to work with. And a lot of brands will have their email within their Instagram profile the same way that I do. So I will just save their email and then at a later time, I will do mass brand outreach to those brands that I specifically selected that I would like to work with. And when reaching out to brands, I have a template and it goes along the lines of something like, hi, I stumbled across your Instagram, really love your vibe. I think this would make for an organic or authentic partnership. Would love to discuss a potential partnership if that is something of interest to you. And the important part in this outreach for you guys to keep in mind is that you're basically pitching yourself. You are selling yourself to a brand. You need to convince them as to why they should spend budget on you and your content. Within my email, I include all of my links to all of the different platforms, even if they're not huge. I'll include my YouTube. I have less than 400 subscribers right now. Hopefully that goes up. But everything you possibly can include in there, your Pinterest, your TikTok, every platform has value to it, even if you don't have a huge audience in it. So I include all the links to that, then that is my first outreach email. If they're interested, they'll come back, they'll ask me my rates, and at that point I'll send a media kit. This is another really important process. If you're going to take this seriously and you want to prove yourself to a brand and show them that you are a professional content creator slash professional influencer, you need to have a media kit. And that is basically a little PDF, few page PDF file. And that includes maybe a short bio about yourself, examples of your work, 
brands that you've worked with. Definitely include your insights on there, your Instagram insights, also your rates. That is really important to show brands that you are professional, that you have your shit together, that you know what you're doing. If you are not looking to pay someone for it, Canva is amazing. Making my media kit on Canva is pretty much what taught me how to use Canva in the first place. A third way that I get sponsorships is through platforms like Aspire IQ, For, and Collectively. The main ones that I have worked with that have given me the best opportunities are For and Collectively. I have worked with brands like Alme, Smashbox, Steve Madden, like these huge name brands. I have gotten through platforms like that and they have a great rate usually. If you aren't on those platforms already, I highly encourage it. I know there's a bunch of other ones, but those are the ones that I use most and that I've had the best experience with. The great thing about those platforms is once you start working with them, you build a relationship with their employees and they trust you they know that you're going to hit the deadlines they know that you're going to create quality content little things like that really do matter when you're working on a campaign so definitely keep that in mind sign up for those platforms it will absolutely help you the fourth way that i get my sponsorships is through my manager and he usually only works with people who have over 100,000 followers i basically pitched myself to him a few years ago and i said hey I know I'm not your typical influencer. I know I have a much smaller audience that you're used to representing, but here's how I feel like I can add value to you and vice versa. And he'll bring me things every now and again, maybe one or two collaborations a month, but hey, that adds up, definitely. And he has brought me some really great clients like Nespresso, and he also is able to invite me to cool experiences and events through brands that are doing any sort of activations down here. So I don't know how realistic that is for you guys watching, but don't be afraid to shoot your shot. I know there's a lot of managers out there. You do have to be careful. You don't want to get scammed. I would definitely, if you find, if you come across a manager, look at their tagged photos, see what influencers they've actually worked with, reach out to those influencers, make sure they're legit, make sure they're getting paid on time, et cetera, et cetera. But that is also a great, way to get exposure to brands that you wouldn't typically get in contact with okay so those are all the ways that i get my sponsorships the hard thing about this business is that it's not steady and every month is different but with these different streams of it's kind of like you have like fishing poles you have just four fishing poles out and whatever bites you just reel up so this is the best way to leverage your opportunities. This is what makes me able to make a full-time income off of strictly my Instagram account. Thankfully, I do have other streams of income. So Instagram is just one, but it's a really great one and it's so lucrative. And I think the industry is only getting more and more lucrative as the months go by. Next up, I wanna get into negotiating because that is such an important skill that I think a lot of influencers aren't comfortable doing they, or they don't know how to do, but that is so important because that is what makes you money is knowing how to negotiate, knowing how to stand up for yourself, know your worth and show your worth, prove your worth to these brands who are allocating a budget into you. Into you? Huh. The negotiation process will always start with the media kit. I don't, personally, I don't mention any any rates within the email typically. I will let them look at the media kit because then they can see all of the value before they see my rates because first impression is everything. And if I throw a number out there and they don't know how good my content is or they don't know how many platforms I'm on, they might have a preconceived notion about my rate and if it's too high, if it's too low. So I think sending it with the media kit is your best bet. You're already proving your worth to them before they even see a number. Typically, they will come back and ask if a certain rate works for a certain amount of deliverables. I always try to get higher. <laughs> Unless they hit me with like a fuck yeah, amazing rate, like yes, I will take it. I am in my bag. Most of the time you really have to fight for your rate. Although I think influencers do get paid really well for what we do, it's also, you're doing 10 people's jobs in one. You're accounting, you're styling, you're being your makeup and hair stylist, you're being your clothing stylist, you are driving yourself everywhere, you are setting up the location, you're setting up the shot, you are producing, editing. So there's a lot more that goes into it than just being the face 
of the image. So keep that in mind. Oftentimes I do find myself having to put my foot down and be willing to walk away because something is not a rate that someone might be offering me is just simply not worth my time or energy to create. But this is also a great warning. Brands will try to take advantage of you and try to have you create content and spin the language in all different ways to make you work for free. If you are creating content that you wouldn't create otherwise, that is work. There's so many things that companies will try to twist and make it seem like it's no big deal for you to create this type of content for them, but it is at the end of the day, that is work. No one works for free. They are getting paid to reach out to you. You should be getting paid to create the content. That's my piece on that. Again, in the podcast, we, we go way more in depth about determining rates and standing up for yourself and knowing your worth, but just be aware brands will try to get as much as they can for as little as they can. Sometimes you get those good eggs that just give you a solid rate and you're like, yes, but most of the time it doesn't work out like that. But how I like to add value, typically if someone sends me a rate, I will always try to raise it, of course. but. I try to raise it by also providing more value. So say they want one Instagram post, one story. I will come back for for X amount. I will come back and say, hey, how about one Instagram post, one story, and three to four photos of content creation for a higher X amount. And this way you are providing them more value. And content creation is something that is very valuable because they can use it for paid ads or they can use it on their stories or their social media however they want you're already taking the photos anyways so you might as well get paid more to just send them a few photos that you already have in your camera roll so that's a pro tip for negotiating higher i always like to add the value of content creation extra stories because stories are easy you can do an unboxing or something like that i would also say just building a relationship with brands is so important because so many brands are willing to work with you again once they already know that you're great to work with after the first collaboration has completed I would always follow up with another one saying that you would love to work with them again, maybe pitch them an idea of something you have in mind for the next collaboration. And that way they see that you are genuinely interested in their brand and you believe in their products and that you want to work with them again because that enthusiasm makes them excited to work with you as well. Brands are looking for those authentic, genuine relationships and partnerships with their creators and if you can show them that you are that creator the odds of you locking in another partnership with them and closing the deal are higher i have been rambling i hope this was helpful i think it was i don't know i feel like i get a lot of questions about how can i get more partnerships how do you reach out to brands what do you say so i hope this was helpful and if you guys like this give it a thumbs up Again, my podcast goes way more in depth about all of these subjects. And if you want a part two of me elaborating on anything, comment below. Make sure to give this a thumbs up. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. New videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. I will see you guys next week. Bye.